just uh, just as we've been singing uh, just about him coming into the dry and weary places in our heart. Uh, some of our team had some uh, had a vision, had a word that that they really felt that um, that God had for all of us tonight. So Nana, why don't you come on up here and uh, share what you felt God was speaking to you? Hey, um, yeah, I felt I, I saw a heart that was made out of like uh, soil or like dirt, and it was so dry that I couldn't see the cracks in it. And I felt like God was just like holding the water can above it and just ready to water anytime. And I saw him water the heart and a flower began to grow in the middle of the heart. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I think maybe there are some of us here tonight, some of you watching online who feel like that, that kind of dried up kind of little heart that hasn't got any moisture and maybe you feel hopeless and discouraged in that and we want to pray for you right now because the father wants to come and water the dry places of your heart with his love and his presence and not only that but what i was sensing from that word nana was that he he's he's going to bring blessing he has promises that he's going to cause to come to flower in your life and I know many of us maybe have promises that have, it's like, I don't see the fulfillment of that yet. I don't see the fruit of that. You've spoken this word, God, but I haven't seen the fruit of it. And, and so if that's you in here, do you want to kind of wave a hand or stand up? Um, and our ministry team are going to come around and pray for you. And uh, Nana, would you mind praying for those people right here and those people who are online? If you're at home, put a hand on yourself and we're going to pray for you if this is you. that feel like they're dried up, like their heart could, can't like, receive any more water in God. Um, I just pray that you hold, you, like, you hold the watering can above it, and I pray that they will just open their heart and just say, let it rain, and just let your water come, Father. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you, Nana. And so we're just going to, let's just put our hands out and as we keep worshipping, we're just going to invite the presence of God to come and rain down. Father, come and rain down on the weary and the dry places. You know where they are, <laughs> even if we don't.
You can have it all. You can have it all. I lift my hands and touch your face. Lord, rain down upon me your grace. I need your love. I surrender.
this is my song, my song to you, God. Oh, oh, oh. This is my song, my song to you. This is my song, my song to you. This is my song, my song to you, God. just thank you for the way that you are watering those seeds of promise that you've you've placed in our heart and just after Nana shared her picture I just kept <laughs> just kept seeing these seeds that well you know how they say when you know a seed goes into the ground it needs to die before it it bears fruit but um, yeah, I just kept seeing these seeds kind of popping to life and um, <laughs> these roots just beginning to, to sink in and go deep. And so, Father, I just ask that <laughs> every seed of promise that has just seemed like it's been dead, been dead for a long time, I just, I just speak life speak the rain of your presence. I just speak that popping out and that um, just going deep of those roots. Yeah, yeah just as we were um, praying in, in pre-service prayer, just one of, one of the students, Johanna, just had um, had a word and I'm just going to invite her to come up and share it because I feel like it kind of fits in with what God's doing so. yeah I just saw birds when we were praying just right before the meeting and I just feel as it says in Song of Songs that the winter time has passed and the spring time has come and the birds are singing again in the country something like that um, and I just feel that maybe some of you out there have felt like that it's been a long winter in your life and that you're just longing for the summer, you're just longing for breakthrough and some of you in the room maybe also. And I just feel like God's going to come with his spring rain, that he's going to come and just take away the winter in your life and just turn into spring and summer. And yeah. And yeah, if it's someone here that feels like that, you can stand up, or just, yeah, and some of you out there too. And I feel also like depression, do you maybe have felt like depression in your life and God's want to take it away too. Yeah. yeah, so God, I just pray that you will come with your life and with your hope to these people, God that you would just come into their spirits and their souls and their bodies and just, I just declare life and hope. And I just declare that your springtime is gonna come in their life, God, and that the birds are gonna sing again. I just pray for a deep joy and a deep, deep hope and life, God. Just release that mm, into the core of their being. Thank you, God. Thanks, Johanna. We have um, a couple prayer requests that have come in from our chat room, so we're going to have some of our ministry team come up and just kind of um, pray for healing. And so as we're doing that, just really encourage you to like engage your faith with, with this. And yeah, even though they're not here in the room, you know, God's presence and his healing is just so much bigger than just the here and the now. So 
Um, Keenan, why don't you I just go ahead? Pray for Ginny right now, who has Lyme disease and infections. So God, I just lift Ginny up to you right now, God, and I just pray for complete healing over these things, God. Yeah. God, you are completely capable of these things. And when Jesus died on the cross, he took away sins and he took away sickness, God. So I just pray that you'll take that away right now in the name of Jesus. I just pray for full healing and restoration, God. In Jesus' name. Uh, while we were praying before the, this meeting, um, there were several words of knowledge. And one of them I just saw was... I saw an, an ankle that we heard, that were kind of just the Holy Spirit was just around the, with this fire in this ankle. So I just wonder, are there anyone in this room that has a problem with their ankle? No. So uh, then I believe there's someone out there. And Lord, I just speak healing to the ankle right now, Jesus. I just speak that you will release your fire of healing right now. And just restore the bones, muscles that are hurt. And that just come to complete restoration and pain will leave right now in Jesus' name. We also have a prayer request, Theresa, on energy and healing in knees and back and side. So Holy Spirit, we just lift up Theresa right now. We just ask that you would just fill her up with your love, with your joy, and with your presence. Papa God, I just pray that she would rest under your power and your healing power, Lord. You would just open up the heavens and release the power of healing over Theresa right now. And he, Theresa, I just see the Lord just, just speaking hope into your heart, the hope into your heart. I kind of sense that your situation around your life is kind of in different pieces, it's broken, you don't see the wholeness. And I just see God is just saying, it's okay, baby, it's okay, I love you, and I'll give you direction, and I'll give you hope. Just fix your eyes on Him. And he'll lead you out of the situation that is kind of messed up right now. There's coming a day where just love and joy and freedom. Thanks, Andreas. Um, we have a prayer request from His Love. Um, they just want are wanting to experience God. Um, they have a problem with their sciatic nerve, um, osteoarthritis. I can't read that pro properly. And fibromyalgia. Um, do you want to come up and, and pray for that, Amanda? Father God, I just want to pray for his love. Sickness of osteoporosis. Just ask that you just heal the, the wounds in his body. You just renew him. Just help him understand that... There's a time and a season for everything and that this too shall pass. He doesn't focus on the pain that's going on right now, that he puts his faith in front of him and that he walks right into it. Just pray that God is there and, and God heals his wounds and heals, heals the ailments in his body. And that he just walks in encouragement and understands that through God's will and God's power, all things are possible. And that he just has faith and that he just proclaims that he is healed and that he believes it and he doesn't let any negative words or any discouragement just cloud his thoughts but he just stays in the realm of positivity and just believes that he is healed and that the healing shall come hi so um i feel like the father's saying that there's somebody here that is um going through some difficulties and there's some decisions that has to be made that are very difficult for you. And I feel like the Father's saying that He's not going to leave you. He's not going to just leave you alone to make those decisions by yourself. He's going to help you to make the right decisions. And yeah. Is that so, anyone here tonight? And I'm feeling like they've got some big decisions to make. Yes, in the, in the back. Um, Peter, do you want to just pray for you? Yeah. I just uh, feel like um, there's people with headaches. Uh, some of those people have had headaches like off and on for a few days. If there's anyone in this room, you can put your hand up or stand up or something. Uh, anybody in this room? Yeah, so if we can get some ministry team to pray for those people, that would be great. 
Um, also just want to, I just get a name Sam. Um, I just want to pray for this guy that, yeah, Sam, I just, I just feel like you feel like you're trying to experience God's love and that sometimes it feels like he's really far away. But I just want to let you know, Sam, that that God's love is is right. Like he's, I see him knocking at your door, and I just I just say, you know, Sam, don't be afraid to open the door because Jesus is just gonna come in with his love, and you know, it's it's all right. You're you're in a safe place, Sam, and and you can do this. Yeah. So just I pray encouragement for you, Sam. A word of knowledge about the right wrist. Is there someone in this room has pain in their right wrist or problems? Yeah? Can someone go over there and pray? Yeah, so I pray for you, Amber, and for everyone on the internet who has problems in their right wrist. Father, just come with your healing. Come with your healing power in their bodies and take away all pain, all problems. Make everything new, restore everything in their right wrist. Thank you that you are our healer and that you want to see us well. Yeah. Uh, well, Jill has just chatted in online, um, sharing about just wanting prayer for strengthening of ankles. And I believe that was one of the prayer requests that were shared. So Jill, we just join with you right now, all of us in here. Uh, let, why don't we stretch our hands towards the camera as a sort of act of faith blessing Jill. Jill, we bless you. Father, let Jill's socks be blessed off as her ankles are strengthened. Father, as she feels just your healing presence and power in her room right now. We bless you, Jill, today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we're going to uh, jump into some more healing and prayer requests later. I just wanted to read that, that scripture that Johanna shared earlier. I'd, I've had it running through my head in worship all night, uh, just in Song of Songs, where, where um, in, in 2, when he says, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, and come with me. See, the winter is past. The rains are over and gone flowers appear on the earth the season of singing has come the cooing of doves is heard in our land the fig tree forms its early fruit the blossoming vines spread their fragrance arise come my darling my beautiful one come with me and i just feel there's an invitation tonight that, that that's just one of the things the father sharing that there is there is a springtime coming to our promises to to our hearts that there's an invitation to jump on in to that rather than be a passive observer so we, yeah dad we just say yes we want to come with you Jesus we want to come with you we want to take hold of everything you have you know, sometimes when we've uh, had lots of disappointments, it can be easy to just kind of stick in disappointment and it can feel risky to jump and take part when God speaks a word and says, arise and come. There's, there's a choice we have, a choice whether to grab hold of it and say, yeah, I'll risk, or whether we're like, no, I'm kind of comfortable here. Thanks very much. And uh, he's inviting us into risky, faith-filled living that's full of of goodness with him. Oh, well, team, thank you so much for worship tonight. That was fantastic. Oh, my heart feels blessed. And hopefully God's heart feels blessed by our worship too. Well, welcome everyone who's watching and welcome to all the lovely people here. Have you got the mic with the short cord or the long cord? Um, appears to be the short cord. Okay, well, I'll stand close to you then and I feel like a dog on a leash. Oh, no, that's not who you are. <laughs> Sorry. Um, We're renowned for being the barking church as it is. That's probably... <laughs> that was not the Holy Don't tell Spirit. John Arna I said that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, carry on. Um, well, I'm Sarah, and this is my lovely husband, Ben. And uh, we're here at the church. We're here with you. We're here with you online. 
And uh, this is my mom and dad-in-law. My Clive, mom and dad? Ben's mom and dad, Clive and Sue Jackson. Say hello to everybody, because they're just the most wonderful people ever. Are you feeling mildly jet-lagged at this point in that slightly... Pretty it, good. Good. It could be um, 2 a.m., but no, no, it's not. It's, it's early. Um, well, we have the great pleasure and privilege of welcoming Mike Palavacci here tonight. Round of applause. Yeah. Mike, we are so blessed to have you with us. For those of you who don't know who Mike is, um, he's a lovely, handsome, intelligent, magnificent... What, what else was on the list? Suave, sophisticated... Suave, sophisticated um, Yes, man. And um, wonderful, wonderful man, in fact. He, um, he heads up an organization called Soul Survivor and pastors a church called Soul Survivor. Um, if you're British, chances are you, you know Soul Survivor very well because it's only the most awesome youth festival that happens every summer. And um, I spent all of my teenage years having the best time at Soul Survivor. And um, so it's really cool to actually get him over here and introduce him to all of you Johnny Foreigners. Um. <laughs> yes, Johnny Foreigners. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about your church and, and kind of how everything kicked off for you. Uh, well, I pastor a church in a town called Watford, which even if you in, live in England, you probably haven't heard of very much. <laughs> um, it's the sort of town that um, people get to by accident. And uh, people who go there um, uh, kind of um, really go there to die and then forget that that's why they went there and just stay, really. And um, um, that's not the prettiest town, uh, but it's my town and that's it's the right. town that I love. And uh, we planted a church 18, nearly 19 years ago there and I still pastor that church. and. Uh, we really wanted to see young people come to know Jesus who were completely unchurched. That's so cool. And you, but you were kind of... At what point did you start the festivals and start the church? Was that very much at the same time? Or? It was. It was in the same year. And it was coincidental. They weren't... The idea wasn't... It was a crazy thing to start two things like that at the same time. Uh, but it just happened that way. Yeah. None of it was planned. None of it's ever been planned. Yeah. Well, not and, by us, anyway. <laughs> and now you're doing festivals where else other than the UK? I mean, it's not just the UK. It's like my stomping ground, my neighbourhood almost. Yeah. It's like right down the road from me. It's perfect for showers just during the festival. It's very muddy, so you want to kind of be able to come home for showers. And Mike was pointing out that because he lives three hours away from the festival, he didn't have that luxury. But I did. No, but you did. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to rub it in. No, you don't feel... There are folk here who have also been to the festival who couldn't pop home for 20 minutes to have a shower. And you've just now gone on for quite a while about how you yeah. had that special status, that luxury. You, it was different for you. And you're smiling about it, whereas there, is, there are actually people here who are devastated oh uh, by the fact that they smelt for the entire week. Yeah, we were devastated and, too. And what, what do you, I mean, how do you feel about compassion and all of that? And, and just, um, I, I, just... I definitely feel called to the dirty and the unshowered. Definitely, yeah. Mm. But you didn't feel called to identify with the dirty and the unshowered. I you basically be. felt called to come to them from a place of superiority. Well, would you say that? I, I'm just one. I'm just asking. Is there a need I, for a repentance here? And only you can answer that. That's not for me to judge. I'm not to judge you. It's only you can say. I think perhaps I should just go and repent in the corner, and you could just preach a hard gospel. How about that? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, you'd go then. Fine. And <laughs> repent, don't shower. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I just want to apologise to those of you who are watching at home. But this has been building. It needed to happen. And, 
and many of us here, we've been, we've been praying for this moment, have we not? And, yeah. and, uh, and you know, there will be the fruit of repentance. Because that man, in the years to come, he's going to get down dirty in the mud with everyone else. And he's going he's gonna to sacrifice his comforts. Anyway. <laughs> Hello. Now, those of you that don't know me, you're thinking, who is this crazy man? Um, it, we're just playing. We are friends, really, and it's just playing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just want to share uh, for a few minutes. That's the last time they'll ever watch this program, isn't it? <laughs> um, about something uh, that I heard uh, on the radio a number of years ago. Quite a few years ago, I, was, I had the radio on as background music, and I was doing something else, and I was only half listening. And uh, the, they started interviewing uh, some student who'd just been on a gap year and had gone around the world on his gap year. These days, certainly in the UK, everyone goes on a gap year. In those days, it was rare. And uh, he was talking about the different places he went to. And after he talked about how he visited parts of Europe, he'd play one of his favorite songs. And then be another five minutes interview about how he enjoyed going to this place. And then he'd play another of his favorite songs. And I was kind of half listening, half not listening. And then he started talking about how he went to Malaysia. Not Malaysia, sorry, Indonesia, uh, which is right next to Malaysia. And uh, Indonesia um, is a, a country of 200 million are made up of thousands of little islands and some big islands. And uh, he went to Indonesia, and uh, the purpose of him going there was he wanted to get to know people. He wanted to immerse himself in the culture. So he didn't want to go to the main cities. He wanted to go and visit one of the smaller remote islands. And he paid a, a passage, and he got on a boat. And as he was on the boat to this small island, the natives from that island who'd been visiting the mainland to go shopping or something, they were sitting around and they were laughing and joking. And in order to get to know them, he thought he would just go up to them and say, what are you laughing at? What's so funny? Now, before I tell you what they were laughing at, I just need to give a bit of background information. And I'm not making a comment about whether this is right or wrong. I'm just giving you some facts. There on certain islands in Indonesia, if a man wanted to marry a woman, he had to purchase her. And the currency he would purchase his wife would be cows. And he would pay her father for her in cows. Now the average going rate for a woman on those islands was two and a half cows. If she functioned well, if everything was in the right place, if she was, you know, a reasonable model woman, Two and a half cows would get you a fairly decent wife. Now, if she was Miss Indonesia herself, I mean, if she was absolutely stunning, if everything was perfect, then the maximum a man would pay would be five cows. Five cows would, you, would get you a top-of-the-range wife. If, on the other hand, she was past her sell-by date, her best before date, if bits of her were dropping off, if it, you know, and all that, then maybe half a cow. Half a cow got you something that, you know, it just, well, basically, it, you get what you pay for. Half a cow would be the minimum. But the average going rate for a wife on those islands in Indonesia was two and a half cows. I'm not passing comment on whether it's a good practice or a bad practice. I'm just telling you that's how it works. Well, he asked these students, uh, what's, um, uh, what's so funny? What are you laughing at? And th these, these natives, rather. And they said, oh, it's hilarious. There is a man on our island who has actually paid five cows for his wife. And everyone knows she's not worth more than two and a half. He's paid five cows. It's years since someone paid five cows for their wife. That man, he's been, he's been fooled by her father. Her father persuaded him to pay five cows. It's hilarious. Well, when the student got to that island, after a while, he met the bridegroom. And not being a sensitive student, 
uh, he started off by saying, do you realise that everyone on your island is laughing at you behind your back because you paid five cows for a wife who isn't worth more than two and a half? The bridegroom said, I paid for my wife what I believed she was worth. And I paid five cows for my wife because I believe she's worth five cows. And because I paid five cows for my wife, she now walks down the main street of our village with her head held high. She says to herself, I am a five cow woman. This one's only worth two. That one's only worth three. But I am worth five cows. And the bridegroom said, because she believes she's worth five cows, she acts like a five cow woman. She, she even looks more beautiful as a result. And there's one question I want to ask you tonight. Do you know how much you're worth? Because somebody paid a price for you that is more than five cows. God, whose value is the only one that counts. God put a value on you. And that is the life of his son. That is the life of the best thing he has. That is the blood of his son. He put a value on you. Do you realize that? Because if you realize that, everything will change. If you really know that, you will walk down the streets of Toronto with your head held high. And you will say, I am worth to the Father the same as his only begotten Son, Jesus. In England, and I think in most places, it must be where you guys come from. Um, <laughs> you know, when uh, on Val we have Valentine's Day in England, do you have that here? Where, you know, everyone sends people they like, Valentine's cards, and there's lots of X's. And, you know, the X's say, I love you. They do. They say, I love you, I love you, I love you. Well, God wrote a love letter to you. And there was an X on it. It's the cross. The cross says, I love you. In John, 1 John, in the first letter of John, chapter 3, verse 1, he says these amazing words. See the love the Father has lavished upon us that we should be called the children of God. For this is what we are. How great is the love the Father has lavished upon us that we should be called the children of God. For this is what we are. Now, some of us, you know, we know that as words. Some of us, we know about that. But what God is wanting for all of us is for those words to be written in our hearts. He's wanting those words to be lived, not just memorized. You can memorize a scripture, and that's good. Or you can live a scripture, and that's better. Or you can allow that scripture to live in you. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to speak that to you in such a way that it heals you. It heals you. It sets you free. I'll just say this very quickly. My, my favorite Bible verse uh, comes in a, a, a very obscure book of the Old Testament. It's the book of Zephaniah. Now, I just want to ask you guys here, just put your hands up, all those of you who have read the book of Zephaniah. Ah. Okay, let me just ask you. All those of you who have read the book of Zephaniah, put your hands up. Uh-huh. Okay, let me ask this another way. Put your hand up if you have never read the book of Zephaniah. 
I thought you wouldn't have read the book of Zephaniah. <laughs> you were too busy having showers, that's your problem. A little less showering and a little bit more scripturing. I just want to talk to all those of you who have never read the book of Zephaniah. And I want to say to you, read the book of Zephaniah. Because one day you will die. And if you die knowing Jesus, you will go to heaven. And somewhere in all eternity in heaven, you will meet Zephaniah. <laughs> How will you feel when he says to you, have you read my book? And you say, what book? If for the no other reason than that, read the book of Zephaniah. It's just got three chapters. It'll take you about seven minutes to read. And the first two and a half chapters is full of woes to various groups of people. But there's a verse halfway through chapter three that is utterly amazing. And it goes like this. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Isn't that a great verse? The Lord your God is with you. What sort of God is it who is with you? He's a God who is mighty to save. What does it mean he's mighty to save? Ben, just come and stand here a second. Turn round. Can we just get a close-up of Ben? <laughs> Flex your biceps. A bit like that. Yeah, I think we've seen enough. Go sit down. <laughs> now just imagine I'm walking down a dark alley late at night with Ben. And walking the other way is a gang of gangsters. <laughs> and the leader of this gang of Gangsters, he comes and stands in front of me like this. <clears throat> and he says, You wanna you wanna start something? Huh? 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 You wanna you wanna you wanna make something of this? Hey, hey, hey. You wanna you wanna rumble? Huh? Huh? If he did that, I would look at him and his friends, I would look at Ben, I would look down at me, and I would run for my life. Because I've done the maths. They're going to kill us. But imagine if I'm walking down a dark alley late at night, not with Ben, but with Iron Mike Tyson in the days when he could beat people up. And walking the other way was a gang of gangsters. And the leader of the gang stood in front of me like this. And he looked at me and he said, What you staring at? Huh? 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 I would probably say, Nothing very much. And then he might say, y You want to start something? Hey, hey, hey. You want to make something of this? Huh? Huh? I would pause, I would think for a moment, and I would say, yeah, yeah, maybe I do want to start something. Maybe I do want to make something of this. Then I would say, Mike, bite their ears off. <laughs> Of 
for the purpose of this illustration and this illustration alone, God is more like Mike Tyson than he is like Ben. Because the God we believe in is a God who's mighty to save. He's a God with biceps. He's a God with muscles. He is not a celestial wimp. The Lord your God is with you. What sort of God is it who is with you? It is a God who is mighty to save. He's a God who makes a difference. He's a God who turns everything around. He is a God with biceps. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. I'll just say this and then, and then we'll, I'll let you work out the rest. What does it mean he will take great delight in you? I am of Greek extinction. And uh, uh, my mum is still alive. And she's, um, I don't know, 80-something. We don't know 80 what because she lost her birth certificate and no one can remember. I'm thinking of having her carbon dated. Uh, but she's 80 something and she lives on her own. And on a Sunday when I'm home, I always go to my mum's for lunch. Now you may think I go to my mum's for lunch on Sundays when I'm home because I know she's an old lady and she lives on her own and I just want to make sure she's all right because I'm a good Greek son. I want to make sure she hasn't fallen over or eaten the cat or anything like that. <laughs> if you thought that, you would be completely wrong. I to go to my mum's on Sunday for lunch because she cooks the best Greek food there is. So on a Sunday morning before I go to church, I pick up the phone, I dial her number. The phone rings. Five minutes later, she answers the phone. <laughs> she says, hello. I say, hello, mum. She says, who's that? I say, it's your son. She says, which son? I say, it's Michael, your son. She says, Michael, my son, it's you. She always repeats everything I say. <laughs> and then I say, Mum, today I am coming to you for lunch. She says, Michael, my son, I am so happy that today you are coming to me for lunch because I have cooked your favourite Greek food. I have cooked for you moussaka. I have cooked for you gleftigo. I have cooked for you dolmades. I have cooked for you magaroni do furno. <laughs> it's okay, I'm back. I just had a moment there. It's all right. And I say, Mum, I'm coming because they're all my favorite. But first, I have to go to church. And I go to church, and during the worship, I'm thinking, Oh, hurry up, hurry up. Why are we singing this song again? Why, are we, why is this going so long? We did this song last week. Shut up. And then, at, and then at the end of the talk, I just want to go, but everyone stays behind for coffee. And I have to talk to them. So people come up to me and they want to talk over coffee. And I'm thinking, haven't you people got homes to go to? Go away. Go away. I don't even like you. And the problem with that is I'm the pastor of the church. Well, eventually they go, I get in my car, I drive the half hour to my mum's. As I'm driving, I can, I can smell the gleftigo, I can see the dolmades, I can taste the magaroni do furno. My car screeches to a halt outside her house, I walk down the path, I knock on the front door. Ten minutes later, she answers the door. She opens it and she says, Michael, my son. And I say, hi, mum, where's lunch? <laughs> and I sit there and she brings it. And it's all there in front of me. And I'm thinking, what shall I eat first? I am paralyzed by ecstasy. I don't mean the drug, I mean the feeling. <laughs> Just to make sure that's clear for those that are watching at home. And <laughs> And then, do you know what I try and do? I try and put all of it in my mouth at the same time. You see, 
You can probably tell just by looking at me. I take great delight in food. Did you know that the Lord takes great delight in you? Great delight in you. Before we met tonight, before you guys came onto the, onto the, the internet, we were thinking, oh, I hope it's going to be an all right evening. Hope it's not going to go wrong. Hope, hope Pilavachi is not going to talk too long. We were thinking all sorts of things like that. I know what some of you were thinking. <laughs> but do you know, one level up, I imagine it was something like this. There were two angels talking to each other. It was something like this. And one angel said to the other, tonight's the night. And the second angel saying, what do you mean tonight's the night? Tonight's the night the Father's so excited. The Lord is so excited about tonight. What do you mean he's excited about it? What's happening tonight? No, it's tonight. Tonight's... You don't mean, you don't mean not the second coming. And the first angel says, no, no, no. The second coming isn't until, oh, I nearly told you. Sorry about that. That's a joke I don't really know. I've got no idea. <laughs> I've got no idea. It's a joke. Anyway. <coughs> no. Tonight, near Toronto Airport, some of God's kids are going to be getting together and they're going to sing some songs. And they're going to pray for each other. And there's going to be some other of God's kids that are going to be joining in in their homes. And God can't wait. He's been looking forward to hanging out with his kids all week. He wants to bless them. He wants to speak to them. He just wants to love them. And he just wants to hang out with them. And some of them aren't going to sing in tune. Yes, God heard you. <laughs> That's a joke. But God doesn't care. He just loves them. He just loves them. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He takes great delight in you. And I'll just say the last two. He quiets you with his love. He quiets your heart with his love if you let him. He heals you with his love. And do you know what else he does? He rejoices over you with singing. Now you thought it was our job to rejoice over him with singing. Well, it is. But you know what? We sing over him. Before we ever sung over him, he sung over us. He's the singing God. He sang us into existence. Do you know God's creation of us wasn't like, oh, I better make something. Oh, it's another day in eternity. It's so boring. Nothing on TV. I'll make something. Oh, well, here I go. No, 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 no. For God, it was like, this is, this is my work of love. This is my work of love. Creation was his work of love. But do you know what? Salvation was also his work of love. On the cross... God said, I love you. I finish with this. Do you remember what I said right at the beginning? If we know that, we change. And if we know that, we, we walk with our heads held high. If we know that, the, the beauty that was in us, come, the goodness that was in us comes out. Comes out. It's not trying to be something we're not. It's allowing his life the life that he put in us to overflow through us. And it's that that changes the world. It's exactly that that changes the world. I finish, I started off with a story from Indonesia. I finish, if I may, with a story from South Africa, a country I love very much. Some years ago, South Africa was in a, a terrible place. There was an apartheid regime uh, that was in force where, <coughs> as a result, the majority of the population not only did had no vote, um, but they weren't allowed to live in certain places, they weren't allowed to marry certain people, uh, they, they, they weren't allowed certain jobs, all sorts of things like that. And then everything turned round, and a man called Nelson Mandela 
became the first majority president of South Africa. And uh, in the rest of Africa, where uh, the oppressed found freedom, uh, they pretty soon, sadly, sometimes became the oppressors. And they said, it's payback time, it's revenge. But you know, Nelson Mandela spoke about forgiveness and he spoke about reconciliation. And very close to him was a Christian, a man called Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And they came up with this idea that instead of paying back the former oppressors, they would establish something that they called the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which Desmond Tutu chaired. And that was an amazing, an amazing idea. I believe it was an idea that came from heaven, to be honest. But there they got, in these courts, people who had done terrible things of every race under the apartheid regime to come and to confess and to tell the truth about what they did. Because yet there has to be honesty. There has to be truth. And then instead of punishment and retribution and vengeance, what there was was reconciliation and forgiveness. Here is one true story from that era. There came one day before the Truth and Reconciliation Commission an Afrikaans policeman, um, uh, a white policeman. Um, his name was Mr. Van Wick. And he stood in the court and Desmond Tutu said to him, what do you have to confess to us? And before him to, a side, to the side was a, a, an elderly black lady. And Mr. Van Wick said, I have to confess that two years ago, I went to this woman's home with my friends because we were angry because some of our, uh, one of our friends was murdered by black people. And we went to her home in the squatter camp and we took her husband and we took him somewhere quiet and we beat him and we beat him until he died and then we buried him in the dirt and then six months later I went back to her home because I was still full of hatred and I took her son with my friends and we took him somewhere quiet and we built a bonfire and then we took a big stick and we skewered him with it and we put it through him. And then we put him on top of the bonfire and we barbecued him. And we turned him around and he screamed in agony until he died. And then we buried his remains in the dirt. The court was hushed. Desmond Tutu turned to this woman and he said to her, you've heard his confession. What would you like to see happen to Mr. Van Wick? This elderly Zulu lady stood up and she said, I would like to see three things happen to Mr. Van Wick. First of all, I would like to ask Mr. Van Wick, could he take me to the place where he killed my husband and my son? that I might gather some of the dust from where they were buried and give the little that remains of them a proper burial somewhere where I know. Secondly, I would like Mr. Van Wick to visit me in my little home one evening a month so that I can cook him a meal and I can show him the love that I'm no longer able to give to my husband or to my son. And then she said, thirdly, I want Mr. Van Wick to come here to me so I can give him a hug now and tell him that my Jesus loves him and forgives him. And so do I. 
At that point, Mr. Van Wick was so shocked by what he heard that he passed out. He fainted there and then. And as they brought him round, spontaneously, someone in that court began to sing. And within seconds, everybody joined in the hymn, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound that saved a wretch like me. That woman could show extraordinary, unbelievable, ridiculous forgiveness for one reason and one reason alone. She had received extraordinary, unbelievable, ridiculous forgiveness from the Jesus Christ who went to the cross for her. You see, she knew how much she was worth. And because of that, she became a world changer. The question I have for you tonight, do you know how much you're worth? It's so much more than five cows. If you know that, if you really know that, if you live out of that place, you can be a world changer. You can bring that love to a broken and hurting world and bring transformation. We're going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord to meet with us both here and wherever you are at home. Who's going to come and, and lead now? Guys, why don't you come? God wants to meet with us. He loves us. He loves us. And I'll just say this very quickly. How, how, how do we get this? It's by revelation. You know, it's not by trying. You know, you know when, when, how do you know when someone really loves you? Is it, is it by saying... Right, I really want them to love me. So I'm going to believe they love me. I'm going to claim they love me by faith. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be loved by them. Yes, 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 they, they love me. That person does love me. Yes, I'm going to keep saying it to myself. That doesn't work, does it? The only way you know if someone loves you is if they love you. And if they really love you, they show you. They show you. They show you. They show you. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. He put inside of us his spirit that cries, Abba, Father, so that we might know we're the children of God. And that's what he wants to do tonight. Let's pray. Let's stand together. Now, guys, those of you that are here, we've been on a journey this week. Don't worry about anyone else. For some of you, it began this morning. It began this morning, but it's a journey. It's a journey. Don't be afraid to open your heart. You don't have to make yourself. Just let him, let him show you. Look at the cross, let him show you, let him tell you. And for those of you that if you're really honest, you struggle to believe that he delights in you because you so don't delight in yourself. And you long to receive this truth. Not grit your teeth to try and believe it, but to receive it. I just want you, as we worship, just to come and stand somewhere here at the front. And the rest of us would love to pray for you. And why don't you just start coming now, if you know, if you know that this is the key, if this is it. Why don't you just come now, if you know that God has spoken to you. That's it, just come. If there's others, just come. Just come. That's it. 
and those of you at home. If you know that's you, why don't you text in and we'd love to pray for you. And as we're praying for these guys, we pray for you now. Others of you, we're family here. Guys, this is family. Others of you, just come and be ready to pray for these folk. Just come and be ready to pray. Lay hands on them. And we do this as family. Others, just come now. Anyone else who wants to, just come and pray. And Father, we ask that you speak your truth, the truth of your word to these, my brothers and sisters, that they might know, that they might know, that they might know. And Lord, we ask that you send your spirit to these, our brothers and sisters, that they might know, that they might know, that they might know. Holy Spirit, cry Abba in them cry Abba through them. Holy Spirit, I pray that that, that that cry might come from deep within them because it's the cry of the Spirit. And He's the Spirit of truth. Bring healing now. Bring healing now. The Lord your God is with you. He's with you. He is mighty to save. He's mighty to save. He takes great delight in you. Not the, just the person next to you, in you. He will quiet you with his love. He'll heal you with his love. And he rejoices over you with singing. Do you know that phrase, rejoice over you with singing? Do you know what it means literally in the original Hebrew? In the original Hebrew, it literally means to spin like a top and let out whoops of joy. Isn't that amazing? He spins like a top and lets out whoops of joy for you. Receive it. Receive it. Receive your healing. That you might walk with your head held high that you might know. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. pray for Stanley who's at home and really suffers with anxiety and, and, and panic and um, Stanley we just are so believing for God to come and just do an amazing thing in your heart tonight Father we ask that you would come and meet Stanley just where he is Father would you come and minister to his heart Father, would you come and let Stanley know just what he's worth to you? That he's so valuable, that he is so loved. Father, would you come and bring resolution to that anxiety? Would you come and bring peace to that fear and to that panic? Father, would you lead him by still waters? Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing. Father, we ask for more, for more of your love, for an even deeper revelation right now.
We just uh, we just wanted to pray for you as well. Johanna had a word uh, before, and she just loved to pray for you. Yeah, Catherine, I just pray for you, and I just pray that God's presence is gonna come wherever you are right now. And I just break off every spirit of depression in Jesus' name. And God, I just pray that, pray that you will just lift it up and Jesus lift it off her in Jesus' name. Every heaviness, God. And I just pray that everything that hinders for your love to come into Catherine, just pray that it will leave right now. Mm. Come with your joy, come with your peace, God. Come with your presence and come with your hope and your life, God. Mm. Come with your love, just around her. In Jesus' name, amen.
Dawn. Um, we had the prayer request for Dawn for healing for fibromyalgia and arthritis. And God, we just pray for Dawn now. We pray that you would just touch Dawn with your healing, Father. Just touch, touch Dawn and take away all the pain, Father. Because you, you took all our pain on the cross. You took all our sins, all our pain. You took it all, Father. So we just give it back to you. And we claim healing. And Don, I just see that, that God really loves you and wants you to know just, just the full extent of his love for you. While we're preparing for this sinning, uh, we're praying and God just revealed this thing to me that he wanted to restore promises that were, has been released into lives and visions about going to missions. Because I just have a sense that there, there are several people that are even watching or here that had like a lot of vision and dreams about going into missions and doing just ministry for the Lord. And you're standing kind of stuck in your position right now. You're like, you're, you're not seeing the promises fulfilled. You probably have prophetic words spoken over you. And you're like, God, where are you? Where are you? And I just be that I just believe that this is a time where God is just releasing, hey, I'm here. This is coming. And I believe there is like, he's just standing at your door knocking. I'm bringing you out soon. I'm bringing you out soon. And wherever you have promises, it's just that there's coming a fulfillment soon. Just claim on to them. Just rejoice in whatever you have because he'll give you so much more. And he will bring you out wherever you have. Like if you have a heart for missions to go to other countries, I just see that God will just take out. He'll provide money. He'll provide resources, the context, the relationship you need. So just stand firm. Let him just guide you. He'll come. I just want to pray for, um, this is a prayer request up for Nathan. Now I can't understand it, whether it's his grandmother or him that has the lump on the hip. It's, it's, it's for Nathan. So I would absolutely love to pray for you, Nathan. Um, yeah, we were just already feeling beforehand that we're to go after cancer today. And I don't know if that is or not, but it's a lump. And anything that's a lump that shouldn't be there, we're absolutely going after that. So Lord Jesus, I just pray for Nathan right now. I just release your presence on him. I pray for total, total healing for him. I just command that lump to leave in the name of Jesus. Completely disappear in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy, that you are incredibly more powerful than cancer. And just release the peace of heaven, just the joy of heaven on you, Nathan, right now. Yeah, just increase your joy on him. Even as he's even as he's listening to this right now, just increase the joy that he experiences as he's sitting and as he's listening to this. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. And just increase that joy. Yeah. Pray for your grandmother Janice as well. Just command Parkinson's to bow to the name of Jesus. Just thank you, Daddy, for your incredible, incredible, incredible love. So just keep coming, Holy Spirit, even in, even in their house right now. We just thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Yeah, all cancer bows to the name of Jesus. getting out uh, well let me just tell you my a little bit of something I was uh, just before the meeting I was I was journaling I was sitting on my toilet and journaling not gonna lie I sort of asking Holy Spirit what he was up to what he was up to tonight and I, I gave him permission I don't know why I have to give him permission but to do whatever he wanted to do tonight and immediately right after that my friend texted me and he's like what's your opinion on healing I've got to teach on healing tonight so I just chatted with healing and I'm like, come on, this is so good. And I just felt before the meeting, just a real freedom to go after cancer with real simplicity. Just, it's, it's a really hard message to take when you're dealing with cancer to just simply go after it because it feels so hard in the middle of it. It's not easy when you're in the middle of it to hear something like, 
uh, you know, God just takes care of it all. It's, it doesn't feel simple in the middle of it, and I realize that. So I just simply pray for you as you're in the middle of it, and I pray it's disappearing right now, but to experience God's love and His power even right now. That's some of the stuff that I was just feeling, and it's that's why I was praying for joy, just releasing the joy of heaven, because there's no other possible way that you can have joy other than to have the joy of heaven just released on you in the middle of this. And I've seen people healed when I released the joy of heaven on them, and that's awesome. That's that's fun to me. And when I heard them practicing before, they were practicing one of the songs that they haven't played tonight yet. Uh, the song, What Does It Sound Like When Heaven Comes Down and all the other lines to that song. That is probably my favorite song in the whole wide world. I've felt cancer shrink under my hand while that song is playing. And every time that song plays, I go back to that. And that's probably the most fun thing that's ever happened to me. It was, it is so awesome. And I would love to see that every day for the rest of my life. And so that's some of the stuff I'm feeling. Okay, well, I think we should finish off with that song tonight, if you guys are up for it. Yeah, and for those of you who are watching at home and who, is, you know, who may be struggling with cancer and just your heart connected with what Earl just said, you know, as, as our worship team sing that song, I want to hear, you know, I, I want to encourage you to hear the Father speaking and singing over you because He sings over you with delight. We are... Uh, as we you know, worship, we're going to be uh, closing off here tonight. But if you are watching and no one's managed to pray for you yet, I want to um, encourage you to phone the CBN prayer line. The number is on the bottom of your screen. It's 1-800-759-0700. And there's a lovely uh, a believer waiting on the end of that line uh, to chat to you and to pray for you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And, uh, you know, I just pray for you that, that that delight, the delight that the Father has in His heart for you would become a tangible reality in your life this week. Okay, Natanya, over to you guys. Let's finish with this song. Yeah, what does it sound like when you sing heaven's song? What does it feel like when heaven comes down what does it look like when god is all around let it come yeah what does it sound like when you sing heaven's song what does it feel like when heaven comes down? What does it look like when God is all around? Let it come.